John chapter 6, it's near in Passover and salvation, redemption, freedom. They are things that are on the, the lips and in the mind and in the heart of, of all of the Jews at this time of year. They would look back to their liberation from Pharaoh in Egypt hundreds of years before when God came and freed them from their slavery, when God showed himself to be a God who saves, who, who redeems, who brings his people out of a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light. And remember, that is what John's gospel is all about. Jesus, who is God, revealing himself to be God, to be the Christ, to be the promised one from God. And we see in this morning's passage here how Jesus shows himself specifically to be the Christ who comes and gives of his body so that we can live, so that we can feast on him, so that we can receive from him and receive true life. The passage that we're looking at here is a familiar one to most of us, if not all of us. It's Jesus feeding the 5,000. It's around Passover. Jesus has been uh, doing all sorts of miracles and showing all sorts of signs of who he is. And he's drawn a following. There are crowds who are gathering around him. He's up the side of a mountain and he's teaching. And it gets to the point of the day where the people need to eat. But there's no food. Jesus asks his disciple, uh, Philip, he says, where can we go to get food? He's testing his disciples. He knows that there isn't anywhere close that they can buy food. Philip says there is nowhere. But then they manage to acquire the, the lunch of a small boy who strangely gets the attention of a lot of uh, times when we tell a story, but he isn't the focal point of this story at all. Andrew brings, brings the food to, to Jesus and he has five loaves, two fishes. And for Jesus, that is enough. Andrew's doubtful. He says to Jesus, here we are, we've got this food, but, but what are you going to do with it? It's not enough to feed these people. Jesus looks to heaven, blesses the food, and distributes it out. And there was enough. In fact, there was more than enough. Jesus says, gather up the leftover fragments and nothing may be lost. There's a few incidental uh, things in this passage that we don't want to miss. That is one of them. There are things that Jesus wants to gather in and he doesn't want to waste any of the food there. Also, he has them sit down, he has the crowd sit down and wait while he is giving thanks for the food. And John says that they, they sit down in a place where there was much grass. It seems a little bit odd. But when we hear that, our mind probably for some of us is taken back somewhere. We think of maybe Psalm 23. And God says that he will lead us by still waters. He will lead us to, to new pastures, to green pastures. And it's beside the still waters that he will restore our soul. He gives us a picture of him being the good shepherd. And that is what Jesus is presenting himself as here. The good shepherd who is leading his people into new pastures and who will feed them, who will quench their thirst and nourish their hunger. He says, gather up the leftovers so that nothing may be lost. What's he talking about there? Well, some would say that's a reference to the remnants of Israel. As Jesus shows himself to be the good shepherd, God's promised saviour. Perhaps he is referring to those of Israel who, who may kind of wander away, but God will eventually bring back into his fold. We don't know for certain, but what we do know in this instance is this little picture here of Jesus feeding the 5,000 as part of a larger narrative that Jesus brings in chapter 6. If you looked at chapter 6, you'd see the whole of the book really rotates around this theme of bread. So you see at the start of the fiend of the 5,000. And then Jesus goes on to say that he is the bread of life. See, the story about feeding the 5,000 isn't really just about feeding hungry bellies. Jesus has shown them that they are hungry. Not just physically hungry, spiritually hungry. And there is only one who can feed them. There is only the shepherd who could lead them to good food. And that is what Jesus has come to do. He is the Christ. And he has come to lead us to, to feast on something better than what the world offers. And that something is himself. He says at the end of chapter 6, he says, He is the bread of life. Whoever comes to him shall not hunger. And whoever believes in him shall not thirst. And then towards the end, he says this, The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is pointing towards his death. If we want to have life, we need to receive Christ. 
We've already seen that with the woman at the well, haven't we? The woman from Samaria who receives living water from Jesus so that she will never thirst again. And Jesus is saying again, if you don't want to hunger again, if you don't want to have this this longing and desire for something that is always going to be incomplete when we feed on the things of this world, then you need to receive me. It's only in Christ that you will find life. Outside of Christ, there is death and destruction and judgment. But don't miss the the gracious, merciful gift that Jesus is offering here. Your life for his. His death for your death. He offers his body. He gives up his body so that we can receive life. And now he he calls us to come and eat, to come and eat of him, to feast on him, not literally to, to eat of his body, but to feast on who he is, who John says in chapter one, he says he is the word. In him is truth. That is why he came to lead us towards truth so that we would never hunger again. What are you feasting on this week? What are you going to to quench your thirst and to to feed your hunger? There's so much that the world will offer us, whether that's just sitting in front of the TV and wasting our time, uh, just watching things that don't really instruct us or lead us anywhere, or scrolling through our Instagram or our Twitter, our Facebook, just looking at things that that don't really fulfill us and nourish us. Maybe it's doing things that are genuinely good for us, but all the while neglecting the true food that God has given us, his son in his word. I encourage us all this week to feast on Christ, to receive what he has given us himself, and to find in that the only thing in this world, the only thing in this universe, that will truly satisfy us. Jesus came as the Christ. John hopes that as we read this gospel together, that we would see him as the Christ and we would believe in his name. And in doing that, we will never go hungry. Spiritually, we will be full. We will be complete. We will never thirst again. We will never hunger again. But first, we need to receive him. And then we need to feast on him. So can I encourage you to be in his word this week? If you don't know him, you need to receive him. But if you do, to feast on his word, to receive words of life, to be encouraged as he he leads us towards those still waters and, and nourishes our soul as our good shepherd. Jesus has come to give us life, folks. Receive it, read it, believe it, and be fed by it.